Africa. Uh, welcome once again to the last installment of uh, the webinar series celebrating the 67, 62nd anniversary of the founding of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. We welcome you today. Uh, today it is a last day for the installment of these uh, profound and wonderful webinars. We welcome our viewers on YouTube, welcome our viewers on Twitter, and we welcome our viewers on Facebook. Tell those ones that are not listening that we are available on my case online on these three social media platforms. Today, colleagues and friends, comrades and revolutionaries, viewers at home uh, in, the, in the continent and in the diaspora, we are going to be discussing a very important issue uh, that relates to democracy and our understanding of democracy in various ways. Uh, and importantly, uh, this discussion is important because as we understand it today, um, 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 majority of the countries have, have been taking place um, in elections and so on and so forth. And many countries have been confirming that they are democratic countries and so on and so forth. Now it is important and imperative that we need to mention and understand what democracy implies and what is democracy? What is the type of democracy that is being utilized in the southern tip of the continent of Africa, occupied as Zania, in relation to other democracies and so on and so forth. So this discussion, we are going to have it and we are going to be uh, having two guests. Um, Africa Jablani Masangu uh, will be a, a guest in discussing this issue as well with Comrade Trimble being a part of the discussion as well. Comrades, welcome. Greetings, Israel. Yeah, Africa. And, uh, at, at this particular moment, co co Comrade, we appreciate your presence. We appreciate that you have made the time. However, because of the links that the PLC has uh, over the years with various revolutionaries across the world and across the continent, today we've got a revolutionary message from a very special place in the revolutionary struggle of the African people in Guinea-Bissau at this particular moment for the celebration of the 62nd anniversary of the establishment of the PAC. This is the message that is coming from other revolutionaries in the continent. Comrade Imani Na Umoja.
Revolutionary greetings, our comrades, brothers, and sisters of the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania. Is way laid to E Africa. E Africa is way laid to. We're honored to bring you our revolutionary greetings from the homeland of Amilcar Cabral in Guinea Bissau in West Africa. And we also bring you our greetings from the organization that Amilcar Cabral left for us to, to, to build, to organize our people, the African Party of Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, PAIGC, founded by that great Pan-Africanist Amilcar Lopez de Costa Cabral. We're with you in revolutionary bonds, in the good, the bad, and the ugly, as you struggle to rid what we call a zania from that rotten settler colonialism, that settler occupation that has brought the disease and disgrace and lack of dignity to our beautiful people in that part of our homeland. We're together with you as you reach out throughout the African continent to join hands and bring stronger bonds of comradeship with all of our revolutionary forces, many that we do not know of throughout Africa. But not only in Africa, throughout the world, particularly where our African children are scattered and suffering, but not only the 115 countries that we find our children in, but in the other parts of the world, where our natural allies of Asia, of Latin America, of Australia, where our comrades work together to bring back dignity to the lives of our children, to rid the world of imperialism, that rotten disgrace. Comrades, we wish you all the courage in the world to remain faithful, as many of you have, to remain faithful knowing that we will win. Victory is on our side. Victory is certain. My name is Imani Naumoja. I serve on the Cinch Committee of the PAIGC. Also, I have the honor of serving on the Cinch Committee with those comrades who are struggling to bring into realization the vision of a Sajjava Kwame Nkrumah Mil Kakabrao Secretary Robert Mangalisa Robert Subukwe to organize an all-African People's Revolutionary Party, bringing together the positive forces of Africa in this organization, this parties, with all those true African patriots who want to serve humanity, to bring back dignity to our people so that we can rise up to the greatness that we deserve. Comrades, we're together as we bring together all these organizations and true children of Africa to bring humanity to its true place. Is we lay to e Africa. E Africa is we lay to. And as they say in Cuba, hasta la victoria siempre, Vince Ramish. Onward to forward to victory. We're together. Thank you very much for that message from Guinea-Bissau, a revolutionary message coming from Imani Na Umoja in the PAIGC. For those who might not have been aware that the PAIGC, as uh, Comrade Imani has mentioned, is a party that was established by the revolutionary uh, Amelka Cabral in Guinea-Bissau to the Africanists in the, Afri in the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. This is the message that is coming from one of the allies of the Africanist revolution, um, Comrade Imani Umoja, and we thank him for that. Um, colleagues and friends, viewers at home, today let us jump into this very critical and important discussion that is, uh, that is uh, talking about democracy. And I'm going to refer to some few writings of different authors and different um, uh, 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 scholars in various elements. Those who speak about um, the, the, the type of political democracy or the type of political dispensation that they are looking into at the, at, uh, uh, as a governing structure. And I refer to one of the speeches uh, by Mangaliso Sokokwe when he speaks about um, uh, the PAC case and he is saying, and I read, he says, politically, we stand for government of the Africans, for the Africans by the Africans, with everybody who owes his loyalty only to Africa and accept the democratic rule of an African majority. Being guarded or being regarded 
as an African. This is the beginning of, of how Sobukwe and uh, his, uh, his colleagues understood what it means or what is the type of political um, uh, uh, foundation that they would like to see in occupied Azania. And this they have said it in 1959 when they were establishing the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Now we go to the side of the West and some of the scholars there in the West uh, into how they define and understand democracy. And one of these scholars is um, Adam Swift, uh, who is a political philosopher. And his understanding is that, um, de he said, what democracy is the rule of the people by the people for the people. And he says this definition is coming from the United States president, Abraham Lincoln. And he says, this is a good way to understand democracy. As long as we are clear that it's the by the people bit that is important. So he therefore says all systems of government are going to be government of the people. It is the people who are being governed. So on the basis of um, the, 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 uh, by the people, according to him, it is the people that are being governed that defines what um, um, a demo part of democracy, what it is. And further on, he speaks about the degrees of democracy. And this is the Western notion and the Western understanding because it comes from uh, uh, Northern America. And he speaks about four, four degrees of democracy. One, he talks about the direct or indirect uh, democracy. And then uh, the indirect democracy, he therefore speaks about uh, representative democracy. And then the, the direct democracy, he then speaks about one of the systems that is normally utilized in the cases of um, memorandums in the United Kingdom and the USA sometimes and uh, in other countries as well. And then two, he talks about accountability uh, uh, democracy, that is accountability of representatives. And this point, he is talking about, let us assume that there is a representative democracy, like what we understand in the type of electoral, I mean, democracy that is being presented in South Africa uh, at this particular moment. Then he talks about the equality of opportunity influence, that is um, a democracy that looks at the aspect of trying to build an equality of opportunity. What opportunity is that is another issue, but it is uh, the third aspect of the degree that uh, uh, Swift is referring to. And the last one, it is um, the scope with which that particular democracy is, uh, is referring to. These are one element of um, uh, some elements of, of um, democracy as understood by Pro Professor Swift. Coming back home, we've got um, one of our own, the great um, author, an Africanist, a lawyer, and a historian, uh, Dr. Mutsuku Peku. And um, he says, and, and, and I want to raise this because um, in the previous text that we have looked into, we have looked at four degrees or four elements of understanding what democracy is. And for him, he says, um, the politics of liberating the poor, the powerless, and the working class is being replaced by the politics of greed for power instead of service delivery and lifting the standard of living in South Africa. He therefore further says, uh, leadership is a responsibility to serve the people, not to bully and abuse them. For Dr. Pegu, servants, are the, servants of the people are men and women who are not for sale and refuse to be bought for any price. And um, uh, this, this is important because he, 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 he's talking about, in, in, in this text, about um, um, a liberation democracy. He, he, he refers to that the type of democracy that is required in occupied Azania, that is South Africa, it's a liberatory democracy. That is a point that I wanted to bring across to the viewers at home as well. Lastly, I'm going to refer to um, Dr. Sizwe Walsh Mpofu, who talks about um, some few issues in relation to how South Africa has, uh, has fared thus far in relation to understanding or in relation to democracy itself. Considering that the discussion is about democracy versus democracy. Now he says, 
two decades of rainbow mythology have soothed South Africa into a state of chronic complacency. We were sold a lie that the vote would resolve our country's fundamental problems. If we only had the patience to wait, somehow over the past two decades, we've replaced a vision of democratic social change with another soaked into the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Today, Bofu says, South Africans are confronted with an ironic problem, appreciating the scale of our country's problems. And he therefore says, um, deeply conservative dogmas are holding the South African democratic orientation. Confusingly, these dogmas and these creeds are draped in the language of liberation and non-racialism and prosperity while serving the interests of the narrow, narrowest elites in occupied Azania and South Africa. That is my inclusion. This is the introduction that I want the viewers and the speakers to have at the back of their mind when, I'm, when, when we're talking about this, because there are various understandings of what democracy is. And today, we are going to be engaging on that particular matter. Now, let us introduce our speakers uh, in the form of um, Comrade uh, Jabu Maslangu. Jabu Maslangu was here with us at the beginning of this session, and he's a son of the soil and an entrepreneur, and also a continuous revolutionary student who has been baptized within the Africanist thought and the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Comrade Maslangu is going to be taking through us 15 minutes of his presentation and uh, in relation to democracy versus democracy. And uh, let us hear what Comrade Mashango has got to say. Isole to Mafrika Mashango. Africa, Mafrika. You can start your presentation, Tony, and greet the viewers at home. Thank you. Good evening, uh, uh, leaders and uh, Pan Africanist followers. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to, to talk about democracy versus democracy this evening. Uh, so much has been in the introductory uh, portion of this discussion, has been said already by yourself, uh, Comrade Tando. Uh, I'm going to refer to some of the things that you have said, the, the groundwork that you have laid in terms of what, what, what is going to be discussed this evening. One, when you talk about democracy versus democracy, it's a very important question. This is the kind of question, Comrade Tando and all uh, comrades at home, this is the kind of question that uh, should have taken place in South Africa before 1994. Last time, or last uh, previously, when I spoke on this same program, I had said some important things when I spoke uh, during that time uh, previously. Among other things, I referred to Afrikaners, which I still want to refer to today. So one of the things that is critical, a leaf that we are taking out of the Afrikaner experience with regard to democracy versus democracy is that as opposed to black Africans in South Africa. Afrikaners before 1948, after the sec second Anglo-Boer War, they found time to regroup and get out of the system and ask themselves difficult question about what type of democracy do they want? What type of economy do they want? And what kind of a political system do they want that is going to serve them that is going to give them life, that is going to enable them. This is what the Africaners did. They needed to do that because firstly, they needed to detoxify themselves of the British poison of colonialism. They needed to decontaminate themselves of all the debt that was uh, piled upon them by the British colonialism that they suffered uh, under, that we also suffered under. But at least the Africaners realized, like a sick man, that we are sick, we need to see a doctor, we need to recruit. Whereas with Africans in, two, uh, in 1994, after 
the democratic elections, we never had time to regroup and say, what type of democracy do we want? We were so infatuated with freedom and the word democracy and the government by the people, for the people, by the people, an oversimplified type of democracy that we thought, as uh, Dr. Sizu is saying there, that uh, we became infatuated with it and it really paralyzed our thinking. We could not really think straight and begin to be critical of certain things that are happening in our lives. So Comrade Tando and all comrades at home and, and, and my, my colleagues here who are panelists, it is important to realize that black people never really got this kind of a chance to say what type of democracy we want. We really thought democracy is one thing and there are no different types of democracies. Neither did our leaders come forward and say, here are options with regard to democracy. Which one do you want? We were just, uh, upon us was imposed a kind of democracy that oversimplified the people's uh, government by the people, for the people. And nobody told us there's representative democracy and there is direct democracy. Which one do you want between the two? You spoke about a uh, direct democracy, uh, Comrade Tando. It is interesting to know that there are countries such as Switzerland, which have the system of democracy that's called direct democracy, a system where people do not have to depend upon the, the, the parties or even their representatives in parliament or in legislature to bring about changes to the constitution, a system where the people can gather together, can get into a referendum situation, can, 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 can petition uh, for changes that they feel they cannot wait for the change of government to take place. This is important. It is the type of thing that is missing in our democracy, the democracy that we have, we have been so in love with, but the democracy that is not giving us life, the democracy that is not encouraging the participation, the direct participation of the electorate, unless it is during the time when the people must vote. And that is why we are stuck with politicians who have used that particular absence of function of that uh, democracy that we don't have to, to use people and only talk to voters on the eve of the elections because they know in between the elections, there is nothing that much that the voters can do that direct democracy usually encourages or uh, gives platform for people to, to, to express their unhappiness and to perhaps seek to change the status quo or whatever uh, conditions that needs to be changed. So uh, in short, uh, Comrade Tando and all other uh, viewers at home, it is important that we must appreciate that we never had a chance and we came in here and we were excited about democracy. We never interrogated the word democracy, the type of democracy which we were being given. Robert Sobugwe, the leader of the PAC in 1959, spoke about this. He went into great detail to speak about African uh, de or a democracy that is defined by the African values uh, or value system. That's important. That's telling of a, of, of a person like Robert Sobukwe. He was specific and saying certain things. Robert Sobukwe was talking about the democracy that must serve the African people. The kind of democracy that we have here has gone against the grain of the African personality. Exactly what we we're talking about a few days ago when I was uh, addressing this particular matter. And back to the Afrikaner, the Afrikaner made sure that he is at the center of the development of his people. He made sure that he controls language, he controls industry, he controls all sorts of resources that are necessary for his development to take place. And all those things that he controls must be influenced and flavored by Afrikaner nationalism. And that is why the Afrikaners were successful in what they were doing. They were not trying to please the English. They were not trying to please America. They were not trying to please the Chinese. They were doing their thing in their own time, on their own terms, 
and at the speed defined and determined by themselves. That's where the centrality of their uh, African person comes in, into their democracy. Our democracy, it's a democracy, as I have said previously, uh, that is not uh, that is not anchored by the African personality. That's why African people do not find much value now out of this democracy, especially after the kind of experiences uh, that we have uh, seen over the past 27 years uh, in terms of our political administration, where you see selfishness and there's lack of selflessness. Uh, politicians are in this for themselves and not to serve the people. And there is no there is no practical acknowledgement that black people are suffering most and have suffered most now especially since 1994 the poverty levels have increased uh, and the people who are supposed to be the target beneficiaries of of empowerment or of being lifted up because they were economically excluded and downtrodden they are the same people who cannot benefit because now the political administration is, is also competing for the same favors for the same opportunities that should be going to the majority of the people and that's why uh, it is important, Comrade Tando, as we talk about democracy versus democracy, that we can say perhaps the brand of democracy that was gifted us in 1994 should be reviewed. We, we as South Africans and as Africans in particular, we must say perhaps we need a direct type of democracy that can uh, allow us not to wait for four or five year terms to come to an end before some changes can happen. We need to have a democracy that can enable and empower us as the decent, as, as, as the downtrodden, as the impoverished people to say we can gather together, we can use uh, things like petitions, we can use referendum, we can use assemblies and other means that are available within the the, the, the direct uh, democratic uh, space to effect changes without really waiting too long. I mean, uh, Dr. Susan Mbofu say, said something very important. He spoke about gradualism. It is the kind of democracy that we are into kills our sense of agency. I mean, Comrade Tando and everybody at home, we are 500 years out of the game of life. We have been excluded for 500 years for taking effective ownership of our lives, for making decisions about our lives, for actively taking control of our lives and changing our lives the way we were, we were in charge of our lives prior to the arrival of the settler uh, uh, population in South Africa. So if there's, you, are, you are behind with, uh, uh, for 500 years, you have been left behind and you have this kind of democracy where the government can, can waste the kind of resources that they are wasting and can really uh, uh, be dragging their feet when they must have a sense of agency to say we are dealing with people who have been uh, excluded for 500 years. We need to have a government that's got a sense of agency. And the kind of democracy that we have does not give us that kind of thing. It brings in the gradualism that kills the passion for political engagement uh, as, as a people between ourselves and, 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 and those that, that, that lead us or those that govern us. So it is very, very important. Uh, and it's, this is something that we should have done in 1994 to say what type of, democ of democracies do we have? Do we have a choice? Uh, do, can we have a supermarket type of a situation where we can walk in and say, man, we've got an option to choose either this product or that product. But this was not the situation. Something, one product was imposed upon us and we thought uh, it's going to solve all our problems. We thought it is, a, it, is, it, is, it is that special pill that can really bring about resolution of a whole of political problems that we have. But another thing I must bring to your attention, uh, my leaders, is that to the extent that we are very much oppressed for 500 years uh, in, in a manner that is unspeakable, that is beyond description, 
uh, we became also infatuated with the word freedom. That's another thing. Words are important in the psyche of a nation. If you use words like freedom and you do not define them properly, they, we, these kind of words with their good meaning uh, present problems. For instance, I don't understand why in the African continent, South Africa, are talking about in uh, when it comes to the day in which they liberated themselves from whichever colonial uh, occupier of their country was. So <laughs> if you look at the word freedom and you mix it with democracy, it's a dangerous concoction. It is the kind of thing that made people to say, let us give up our, our power to hold the, 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 those that lead us accountable. Because we thought we were free, we thought we have a democracy, then activism came to a standstill. We thought that it is now wrong of us to become activists like we were activists during apartheid and before apartheid. And everybody gave up their power, everybody went to mind their business and God for us all now or the government for us all. But that was a very big, serious lapse of concentration on our part as a people. Uh, the word uh, freedom has also caused lots of problems for us, as I have said. Uh, I think there, were better, there, there was a better word, which is this word independence. Perhaps if we had also introduced the word independence, the 27th of April, if we had called it the day of independence, maybe it would have, it, it, it would have put some, some, some question marks in our, in, in our minds as a nation. Who are we becoming independent from? What are the responsibilities of being independent? And all sorts of things that go with independence. You cannot be independent and yet you are being fed by the person who formerly oppressed you, who formerly colonized you. You still buy food from him. He still uh, uh, produces uh, food security is, is, is his problem. Food security is in his terrain. You are the one who's asking for food from him. But on the other side, you are behaving like a free person. You know, you think freedom is behaving uh, uh, free, doing all sorts of things without thinking, without having responsibility to do certain things. So in a way, our democracy became intertwined with the word freedom, and we lost a whole lot of value as a people. And this is something that uh, we should interrogate going forward. And these are the kind of things that a leadership that looks like Robert Sobuko's leadership, unfortunately, we lost it. We are, we, are, we are staffed of a leadership that can introduce words and words that can really give us some shape as a people. That's a problem. That's the tragedy of our times in modern, in, in modern South Africa. We lack leaders that can give us words, words that give us direction, that give us form and shape as a people. And that is why when you look at also the democracy, the democracy must be informed by nationalism. You cannot have democracy that is uh, abstract and vague. That is another problem. And that is why Robert Sobukwe gave our democracy, qualified our democracy. It is not just democracy, a, peop a, gov a, a government for the people, for the people, by the people. He said it must be a government of the African people. That creates about a majority where majority decision making is that of Africans for the service and for the welfare of Africans. That's important. Now ours, it's another democracy, the democracy that you inherited from 1994, the democracy that is actually troubling us. And that is why we have people who lack the interest now to go and participate in elections because the democratic elections brought about by this democracy uh, in contrast to how people feel that they are not being properly served. And that's why we say people have lost the, uh, interest or are, are losing interest at a greater speed uh, to participate in constitutional democracy where we have to, to be 
voting for new parties every four or five years. The previous elections uh, bear testimony to what I'm saying. The people stayed at home. They said that this is no longer our thing. It's something that benefits those that are in power. It's something that has become, our democracy actually has become a benefit to those that are in the corridors of power. It is not a democracy which is saving us. That is what is coming out of this whole thing. But because our people have not been introduced to other forms of democracy, nobody told them that there are other types of democracies. And it is clear to me that the powers that be are not keen even to introduce these kind of things because these are kind of decisions that you uh, discussions that must be happening uh, uh, in South Africa to say yeah. uh, it looks like there is no interest on the part of people or the interest is dwindling. Yeah. Uh, are you aware that democracy has its different shapes and forms? It has its different uh, options. Mm. Uh, okay, okay. Do you want to look at another type of democracy, perhaps, mm. that can that can keep the interest of the people right at the center of 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 of, of, of the political system that we have here? But yeah, uh, Mahabata, uh, just uh, uh, clo close up. Thank you very much. If, if, if we don't keep the, 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 the interest of the people in the democratic dispensation, not exactly this one, we run a risk of having problems politically where they can become, where we can experience dictatorship and all sorts of problems where the people are not buying into how they're being governed. So uh, that is the long and short of it, uh, Comrade Tando. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Masango, for this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, a few points and uh, that are very important you have put across there, and um, uh, you, you, you have spoken about uh, um, uh, some forms of um, uh, the, the qualification of democracy uh, without just putting it up there, not clarifying what, what, what does it mean, what, do, what does it mean. And therefore, also I, in, in part of your of your submission, there's something that um, you, you you seem to be pointing out. You say that the current approach, the current democracy as we understand it today in occupied Tanzania, is that it is not liberatory. It is not speaking to these forms of uh, of, um, of, of, of 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 liberation or even of independence uh, that that the Pegu is talking about. And, and also at the same time, you are, you, you are, you are making a claim about people were not given uh, the chance to decide on the type of uh, uh, democracy that they, they want. And uh, <clears throat> historically, uh, this, uh, the, the, the is, there is a, a fact that uh, says uh, there was a representation, there was a group of people who were uh, put into these discussions to represent the people. Without them, people giving them a particular mandate to say this is the type of democracy that uh, uh, we, we we want, and I can tell you now, and I can tell the viewers at home at this particular time that in the in during the the, the, the period of uh, of the negotiations, I have went into some of the archives of the PAC, and there has been a constant uh, a submission by the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania in that period to say allow the people uh, uh, as assembly, because the people will be the ones who are going to determine the type of constitution and the type of voting, including the electoral process that must be made. Absolutely. I'm putting that to the viewers so that if there's anybody who disputes it or wants to engage it further, uh, they could. But also lastly, before we go to you, Comrade Trimble, um, some scholars are saying that the type of democracy they no longer say it is a it is a it, 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 it is a sellout democracy. They say it's an elite compromised democracy because right. you can point to a few people that were the masterminds of uh, the, the, the that particular um, democracy. Comrade Trimble, um, your fifteen minutes is uh, starting now. Up to you, Comrade. Welcome, uh, greetings, Israel. Israel too. Yeah, I'd like to start by uh, thanking uh, the host, uh, the host organization, our PAC, and the audience. I'd like to start by indicating that democracy is impossible under capitalism. 
And that is the problem that we've faced in most of the world. That's certainly the problem we're faced in occupied Azania. So it didn't matter that we got the vote in 1994. As my colleague and Conrad Jabalani pointed out, we see that the inequality has actually increased. And why is that? It's because we're in a capitalist system. The ownership of the means of production are still in the hands of those few. And this is irrelevant to the fact that we have a vote. What has happened is that capitalism dominates all of the institutions that we have, including the electoral process. It dominates uh, the media. It dominates the educational system. And in dominating the media and the educational system, it has put forward a lie in terms of what it claims democracy is. There are three things that they constantly are talking about in terms of democracy, particularly with presidential elections. One, they talk about term limits. Two, they talk about uh, this, this notion of a multi-party system. And they talk about uh, how not only, uh, they talk also about the periodic elections. So in other words, every four or five years, you have to have an election. And two, if you go more than two terms and somehow you're a dictator, and they have to have a multi-party system. This is a very flawed system because it is not at all linked to the economic reality of countries. So what we have is we have multi-billionaires who are actually running the country, whether you're talking about occupied Azania or whether you're talking about France or the UK or the US. And what happens in this electoral process is that in order to run for election, you must have a massive amount of money. And where does that money come from? The money comes from those capitalists that you actually end up doing the bidding for. An example, this last US election, they spent $14 billion, 14 billion US dollars on the election. This is twice what was spent in 2016. And this was financing parties, candidates, and who do they owe their allegiance to? They owe their allegiance to the capitalists who funded them. The last South African elections, two billion rand was spent. A billion rand spent by the ANC, 600 million rand spent by the DA. And you can see what's left was divided by a range of other parties. So you wonder why we have the parties in power that you have? It's because of this electoral process. But instead of us understanding this sham, somehow we're told that because we get to go to the ballot and we can choose between any number of these parties that this is democracy. This is what we call participatory democracy, not genuine democracy. So it's important to understand that. The second aspect of what happens with this uh, party system and the so-called democracy is that special interest groups play a serious role in terms of, 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 uh, of what goes on in terms of elections. We see now this whole Zonda thing in terms of indicating uh, the role that Gupta's family played in terms of a special interest, really. What's more insidious, the most insidious special interest group that we see globally is the Zionist movement the Zionist movement. We see that both here, and if you followed the papers recently, uh, was it Tony Leon who put his book out and he was talking about yes. how yes. they need to operate with Israel? And then somebody countered that uh, with the argument. And then you saw this slew of arguments coming into the media that some, for some reason, uh, the newspaper felt compelled to post. And it was the Zionist movement that had orchestrated this. So I think we need to be aware of these things that are really not at all related to true democracy. The one party system is one of the things that they claim is undemocratic. So what happens is you have uh, uh, people like Biden and the US who are now claiming that China is undemocratic because it has a one party system. And they're arguing that uh, this this battle between what they call democracy as a multi-party system versus what they're claiming is authoritarian in terms of a single party system. 
But if we look at what has the successes that the single party system has, we'll see that it's actually more democratic. I'm gonna just give a short example in terms of what happens uh, with Cuba. Cuba is, is largely, it, ha it has multiple parties, but it's dominated by the one Cuban Communist Party. But the campaigning is not allowed. No party can campaign. The elections will take place at a local level and all you get is one A4 sheet to explain why you should be elected. And these sheets are posted at the post offices and other public places and the public goes and views those, decides who to vote on locally. The local delegates then vote on uh, the regional, the provincial up to the national level. As a result of this, the Cuban National Assembly is 40% black, 40% black and mixed, 53% women. And yet the US and others wanna claim that this is not representative of the people. There are only three countries in the world that have a National Assembly of Parliament that's mainly a majority women. The majority of the population in the world in each of these countries is women. Only three countries and Cuba is one of them. So we have to look at governments that really represent the people. And this is reflective of representing the people. We have to, rep we have to see governments that really can do something for the people. When you have a government like you have here in occupied Azania that does not control the resources, if you have a government in the US that does not control the resources, they are not making the decisions. It's the capitalists that are making the decisions. And if you have any situation where a small minority, less than 1% of the population is making the decisions, you do not have a democracy. So why do people think the US and India and France and the UK and South Africa are democracies? Because you get to vote. It's participatory democracy. So I think that this is what we have to come to realize. And at this point, I'll come to a close and open it for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Trumbull, for that uh, um, very, very, very interesting uh, um, um, intervention and contribution. And um, what, what, what we are getting here, even in your beginning, was that there is no possibility of a democracy under a, 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 a screwed uh, system of economy, which is capitalism. And also you are making this to, to you, you are clarifying to the viewers and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the Africanists that there are, there are special pre or uh, uh, rubric elements that uh, the, 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 the custodians, the so-called custodians of democracy tend to put in place so that they define what democracy is or what country meets the requirements of democracy. And one of them is that uh, there the, the must be multi parties um, and also there must be term elections and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So you put those things very clearly. And I think <clears throat> the people who are listening and are watching this, uh, this program are able to see what we are talking about when we talk about the type of uh, democracy that um, in our country is currently uh, utilizing. Again, you've got over 30 uh, registered political parties uh, into the system. And, uh, and also you've got the five year term administration that is taking place. And, um, and also we know the type of uh, economic system that has been uh, <coughs> taking place. But more importantly, Comrade Trimble, you are talking about the involvement of money. That means, uh, the, we, 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 we need to understand that the type of democracy that is uh, dominant in our country um, is the one that is infused by money. There's always money that is, uh, is pushing it. There's money behind. That is why today we've got a big debate about um, um, the statement of a CR17 campaign of a ruling party uh, and a ruling uh, of a president of a ruling party and how these things um, have, have affected how people understand um, um, elections and so on and so forth. And those who are making an argument are saying, by investing in the ruling party's uh, uh, campaign, a particular campaign, it therefore, by extension, links up to the elections 
of the country which are going to do it, going to take place in 2019 in the instance of occupied Tanzania. And, and, and another point that you are putting across, Comrade Trimble, is the issue of interest groups. And uh, you, you, you talk about one specific one, and, and, and this one, you, you mention it without um, fear of contradiction. And you talk about the Zionists and their influence because of the power uh, of money that they, <clears throat> they have. And lastly, uh, for the viewers at home, uh, Comrade Trimble makes a very, very uh, critical issue of a one-party system where majority of people always view it as, a, as, as, as non-democratic in, the, in, 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 in their discussions. But what Comrade Trimble um, is, is actually saying there is, um, if democracy is the, uh, 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 for the people, by the people, uh, if that is the case, and also in, in Sobukwe's thinking, let's say you've got a, a, a one-party state. If the people make a, a choice to say that we are, uh, are, are going to be uh, voting for this party, or we are going to be voting for this one governing party, it is the people who are making the, that particular reason and that particular outcome. But I want to hear from you, comrades. Uh, I'm going to ask Comrade Mashangu the same question and also Comrade Trimble the same question. Today in occupied Azania, there has been institutions that enhance democracy, institutions that enhance democracy. And there has not been that fundamental focus on um, the people being the, the drivers of, uh, of democracy. <clears throat> For an, for an example, you've got a um, uh, South African Human Rights Commission, which I've got a big problem with, by the way. You've got um, um, uh, public protectors and other institutions. What is your view about this issue of making democracy uh, located into the institutions rather than democracy being with the people so that it can define how the institution must, uh, must operate? Comrade Jabu and then Comrade Trimble, you will follow with your answer as well. Mm. Unmute yourself. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, yes. Thank you, my leader. Yes. I say the answer is control. Comrade Jabu? This, uh, company, there's a call that's trying to come here. I'm trying to 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 drop it. I am sorry about that, my leaders. Okay, uh, proceed. Yes, I'm saying it's a question of control. If democracy is residing amongst 40 million people, you do not have control. Even if you control the media and the thinking, you do not have the kind of control that whoever finances the political uh, establishment of various democracies would not have control over 40 million people, you know? Now that's why such, uh, uh, such institutions, such as those that you have mentioned, that says they promote democracy, that they are here uh, to ensure that there, there are checks and balances in democracy, there are no excesses, etc. Uh, that's why such institutions, uh, the question we must ask about them is, who finances them in the first place? And in South Africa specifically, when you look at most of the leaders of those institutions, they are white people. I have a problem that a country that is, it, that is majority African, uh, when it talks about its life as a country, because we are talking about the life of the majority here, it is always white people making comments. It's always white people giving uh, leadership in terms of discussion and, and talking about the solutions uh, to African problems, of which they are not part in a manner that they do are not at the receiving end of the hardships and all other challenges that an African is subjected to. That, that is problematic. That is why I have a problem watching TV and every time there's a political commentator, you find that it's, 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 it's white people commenting about things black or black African. 
Haven't we got the capacity to think and design solutions for ourselves, etc.? cetera? Uh, but those are the same institutions that you find that are financed by the people who've got an interest in the political space without being elected. They have an interest to use their money to keep certain politicians in power, to keep certain organizations in power, because by keeping them in power, they have control and, and, and uh, the financial economy is, 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 is not threatened by, by people whom they may not have control over. And that is the, that is the, that's the, that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue. Thank you, Comrade Masangu. Um, uh, Comrade Trimble, you can you can also make your comment. And immediately after that, a comment we are, will be taking the questions from the viewers at home. Comrade Trimble. Thank you. I think the problem is that th these institutions under the capitalist governments that we see across Africa and most of the world <clears throat> have no power really. Uh, so yes, it would look better if they were more democratic and you had more direct control in the community. But just take, for instance, all the countries that have ministries of land, ministries of mines, the ministries of industries. They don't control the industries. They don't control the mines. They don't control the land. Now think about it. They have these ministries, right? They don't control these things. They sometimes try to make little guidelines to say, okay, we're gonna have a BEE -E program where we're gonna require uh, a certain percentage over the next 10 years in terms of allowing uh, for, for Africans to have some say in this, but they don't control Loman, they don't control Anglo-American. So we have to come to grips with the fact that even though we, it's good to have more say in these institutions, until we take control of our resources, take back our land, take back the mines, take back the industries, and take control so that the people actually control these through a state apparatus, we'll have no democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Trimble. And the, 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 the fundamental theme in what you just said is that let's take back the land. Uh, yes. Those politics must be the politics that must never be, must never cease in the discussion of um, of uh, the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania. Even if uh, uh, one wants to uh, be an aspiring bourgeois, as I am wearing today, you can see I'm even wearing like a an aspiring bourgeois. <laughs> so, but the question of the land must never leave the sight of our politics. So we are still saying it today, the land is the fundamental and the, 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 the position that we must carry on forward, irrespective, and we'll be able to destroy capitalism. Colleagues and friends, viewers at home on Facebook and Twitter, please submit your questions and feel free to post your questions and your comments to the comrade, to comrade Masangu and Comrade Trimble. We're going to take some of those uh, comments, but it is important that I refer to one of the important um, uh, 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 texts that uh, support what Comrade Trimble is saying about the country and what Comrade Matango has mentioned about the inequality and the problems of, um, uh, now I'm going to introduce this word, liberal democracy. Liberal democracy, because we are living in a liberal democracy and I'm Africa must constantly understand that we are living in a liberal democracy Others, they, they call it a constitutional dictatorship because of uh, the constitution has been seen as uh, the alpha and omega of uh, uh, our country and, and, and so on and so forth. But it is important to, to, to read what Greg Marinovich has written here. He says, in South Africa, the two richest people earn as much as the poorest paid 26 million of their countrymen. And therefore, the international gauge of in, um, income inequality, that is the Gini coefficient, it measures South Africa as the worst in the world, mm -hmm. and sometimes occasionally rising to second and sometimes to third. So yeah. uh, 
these these are the realities that are, are, are available and that we must uh, begin to talk about. And the next questions are going to be engaging, particularly to this to this issue. But I want to give Ama Africa uh, the time to make their comments and their questions. Can we take the comments uh, from from the from the floor while uh, we we can? And um, we've got Sivuile uh, Maweni. Uh, who is making a comment here or a question? He says, the more money you have, the more chance of winning an election. And I think this is a comment that he is making. Comrade Trimble, you dot down this, this, this comment. Uh, there is also another comment or a question that is, is coming from the floor. Um, but what, what Maweni is saying is um, basically money makes elections. That is make you win the elections. If you don't have money, therefore you are not going to win elections. And this is going to be my, my next discussion point of money and winning elections. Mtun uh, Zimbewana uh, is saying, what we have in occupied Azania is not democracy because it even the it, it, because even the representatives are deployed by the winning political party, not elected by the people. Correctly so. Mm, Tunzi, correctly so, that sometimes we get stuck with the, the type of leaders that we have not elected uh, because the winning political party determines those people. And unfortunately, those people, therefore, will constantly tow the party line. And, 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 and that is a, a very important contribution there. Uh, here is another question or a comment that is coming through uh, <clears throat> into the mix. Uh, for the for our discussion, uh, Sizwe Chikuga, uh, Sizwe Chikuga says, voting does not equal democracy. The foundation of democracy is masses owning and controlling the major means of production. That is the land, the banks, factories, means of exchange and distribution. Masses engaged in political organizations, etc. Through through these three. Uh, comments, Comrade Trimble. What would be your, or what comment can you make for us, or can you dissect them so that um, they can make better sense to all of us? Well, let's start with the, the third comment. I mean, this is what I've been trying to drive home: that you can't have democracy in a capitalist country where uh, those uh, few people own and control the means of production. As you pointed out, you know the two wealthiest. Uh, men, white men, in in South Africa, control more than uh, than millions, uh, tens of millions of people uh, in this country. Twenty nine, I think, million. I think is what it is. So you you cannot have a, a democracy in, in this type of situation. Uh, clearly, as I pointed out, in terms of the monies that are spent on elections, ranging from uh, the U.S. to to European countries to what we see here, uh, or what we saw recently in Uganda. It's based on, on the monies that they put out. And in some cases, this is very crash, like what happens in Uganda, where they actually go out in the rural areas and give money to, to people in villages to vote, you know, and how did they get this money through the corrupt types of manners that we, we see uh, in terms of characteristic of neocolonialism. So, so this is, I think, something that, that we need to be aware of. The other thing that I wanted to hit on though with this is, the notion of voting for parties versus individuals. I know now this is a thing that's coming up. Uh, Numani yeah. is raising as if he wants to run now that he's, that he was a experience, expelled experiment with the <laughs> DA. <laughs> <laughs> that, that he now wants to try to gather some, some support for this, you know, straight up election. But that doesn't change the, the situation that the first comment yes. raised, yes. the money that's really gonna put you on the ballot that's gonna, so so he may be able to get, amass that support because he's pro-Zionist and because he's pro-capitalist to, to run as an individual and if that, if that change is made, but it doesn't change the nature of the situation in terms of who really controls the capitalists, not the people, yeah. so it's no democracy. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you, thank you very much, Comrade Trimble. And, 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 you, are, and you are speaking about him. And, and, and you're speaking about the, 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 
the crisis, because this is the crisis of democracy as well, and it's a crisis of capitalism as well, because it constantly wants to reinvent itself. Because now people are beginning to see the flaws <clears throat> of the type of democracy that um, we have been have been imposed on the on the on the on the people of uh, occupied Azania. Now it, it wants to reinvent itself, and therefore there's a discussion that comes into play. Now for parties that have been um, um, uh, castrated financially in a liberal democracy, as we understand it today like the PAC, the reality is that the PAC is one of the parties that have been castrated since um, uh, uh, 1994 or since the unbanning of, of it. Or even we can take it further, since when it was still in exile, it has been castrated uh, when it comes to resources and, and so on and so forth. Now, um, what do, 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 do we think in the current context, in the current understanding of this bad democracy that we have, um, parties like the PAC would be able to, to, to make a fundamental impact. If yes, uh, how would that be? If no, what causes that? And how can such parties uh, uh, deal with that problem of, 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 of money? Comrade Jabu and then Comrade Trimble. And immediately after Comrade Trimble will be taking further comments and questions from the floor. Comrade Tando, it is it is it is it is not easy really for 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 parties uh, or for anybody to be running elections uh, without money. Maybe the question that we also must be asking ourselves is that how do we also lay our hands on resources uh, to determine our own future? Because when you look at it. We use our majoritarian uh, situation or where we are in the majority. Comrade Jabu? I think Comrade Jabu is, uh, is experiencing a little bit of network problem there. Uh, Comrade Jabu, can you hear us? Okay, now that we are, uh, let us try Comrade Trimble for the time being uh, to, to save time. Comrade Trimble, your comment on that question. Well, I think it's important that uh, the PAC uses its uh, presence in parliament to be a firebrand. And what I mean by that is they have to be very forward in putting together the positive action campaign, to putting forward the fight for land, putting forward the fight for socialism, exposing Zionism on a constant basis, uh, realizing that if you only have one seat or two seats, it's not going to sway the vote, but you have uh, a uh, audience, a public audience in terms of being able to push the position, not only on the parliament floor, but uh, amongst the media. And I think that that has to be such that it's, uh, that it reaches out to the masses so that the positions in uh, as a minority in municipalities to a national parliament for revolutionaries has to be one of taking a revolutionary stance and to expose uh, the neo-colonial and settler colonial nature uh, that surrounds uh, this uh, uh, parliament and 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 councils and uh, the whole. Uh, uh, electoral apparatus it has to be one of exposing that, and and this is where I think that we as the PAC have to be more assertive in terms of pushing a revolutionary line. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This 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 point that you are making, um, we have picked it up also with some of the discussions uh, during the week, and um, um, and they, they they have they have clearly said that the revolutionaries must utilize the, the, the type of platforms that are available to put across a revolutionary posture that will expose the problems and the, and, 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 and the lies of uh, this so-called democracy and the lies of um, this um, liberation or freedom and so on and so forth. But 
what I'm hearing from you, Comrade Trimble, is that you, you, you are saying a, 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 a parliamentary politics must never be seen as, a, as, a, as an end in themselves, but they must be viewed as a vehicle towards a specific outcome. And, and, and that is a great, a, 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 a great way of, um, of seeing things. Now, on top of that, the issue of um, uh, having um, businesses in, in, in countries like um, Occupy Desania, where you've got, for an example, you've got Vodaco, a, a, a global uh, entity that has got its roots in the, in the United Kingdom, that would fund the political parties um, of South Africa under the name of Enhancing Democracy. It becomes very apparent that these businesses have got a particular interest, and therefore the type of system of uh, democracy that we need, we need to riddle it out of that. But this issue is not only South Africa based, but it is global. Now, to help in this global fight of uh, capitalism and uh, this neoliberal understanding of democracy and this dictatorship by the business and, uh, and economics, <clears throat> how would parties, revolutionary parties, in, 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 like the, the PAC, utilize uh, uh, the links with other revolutionary parties in order to help to fight this, uh, this global scourge, this global pandemic of capitalism that manifests itself in liberal democracy and poverty and, 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 and everything else that we see in our country. Well, I, I, I think that the, the clip that you played of Imani and the PIGC is an example of the solidarity that we need uh, between uh, revolutionary forces that are struggling for socialism and pan-Africanism. Uh, I think also extending the relationships that the PAC, for instance, has with, with Cuba, with Palestine, are, are, are meaningful ways of, 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 of moving on that. Within the context of the parliament, I think one of the, the, the fights that needs to be raised by the PAC is that uh, they need to insist that they have a seat in the Pan-African parliament. Every uh, country in uh, Africa has three seats in the Pan-African parliament. The Pan-Africanist Congress of Zania is the only Pan-African party in the country, and yet they don't have a seat. They, the three seats are divided between the ANC and the DA. The DA is a member of the Pan-African Parliament. How, you know, how ridiculous. So I think it, it, it should be an active campaign in Parliament to, to actually raise this contradiction. And if it's taken uh, up there and taken amongst the people, I think the people will see this as a contradiction and say, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. We have a Pan-African parliament that, that meets right here in Midran. The PAC is, is the oldest Pan-African political party uh, in the country, founded in 1959, and yet they're not part of the Pan-African parliament? Wait a minute, what's wrong here? You know, And then that would expose the fact that the Pan-African parliament is really decided by the majority and the dominant minority party, it doesn't mean that any of the delegates, whether they're ANC or DA, have any real interest in Pan-Africanism. So mm -hmm. yeah. this is one of the things that, that can be done. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, correctly so. And, and the viewers at home must, must take this thing along with them because it doesn't make sense to have a Pan-Africanist parliament and you don't have a representative from the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania in that parliament. Comrades and friends, my Africa viewers at home, that is a project that you must take. Uh, there's a comment that we have from Gosi Nodume, and he says, I know that there are two contending types of democracy in the whole world, a people's democracy and a bourgeoisie democracy. And uh, bourgeoisie democracy uh, is what is dominant now, and it is not what we want. We want an Africanist, socialist democratic order, which is informed by scientific socialism. <clears throat> and, um, and further than that, there is Melikaya Befil, and he also makes a, uh, a comment there, and he says, until such a time we know as Africans that Africa does not belong to all who live in it, the first thing that we should educate the people of Africa 
We cannot go to the China and say China belongs to us as Africans, as some Messia political party uh, should be told that they must not babysit the whites who take the land with the barrel of the gun. Furthermore, we've got Sizwe Chikuga, who is, is, is making also his comment there. Sizwe Chikuga is saying, there was a voting in Nazi Germany and apartheid South Africa, where these democratic nations, and this is a very critical question that I think um, uh, viewers and colleagues at home uh, must, must, must answer to as well. And we've got Mtunzi also coming back. Mtunzi Mbewana is saying, uh, when are we going to embark upon a continental unity to form a monolithic state of Africa so that Africans can enjoy their land, wealth, and access to capital for the development of Africa? Because now our so-called independent states are abused by colonialist bullies. We'll take another few, uh, and then Com Comrade Trimble and Comrade Masangu, if Comrade Masangu is still there, we then are going to uh, come back to make our closing um, remarks. We've got him Africa Mpai class, or he's saying he's, uh, he's still watching, um, and, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, what you are getting, you, you're getting a sense of a, a majority of the viewers at home, Comrade Trimble, is they, they feel suffocated, but also at the same time, they feel there is an action that must be done. There's something that uh, uh, needs to be done um, from the people's perspective, from the people's orientation. And how would you try and, and, and help these uh, and unpack uh, some of the things that could be done in order for us to determine, because most of the time, and this is the question um, that I wanted to, to close with, most of the time people begin to say the PAC is irrelevant. And, and I say the PAC is not irrelevant, but the type of democracy or freedom that is being performed in the country is the one that suffocates the idea of freedom of the African people and the African masses. And the PAC is supposed to be fighting against that. Therefore, the powers that be continue to sideline it and place it in the periphery. Therefore, there's no irrelevance of the PAC because the PAC seeks liberatory democracy under socialism. So what is your point uh, on these comments that have been made by these colleagues and comrades uh, on, 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 on from the platform? Comrade Trimble. Well, first, I think we need to clearly reemphasize the fact that there is no democracy under capitalism. You know, they call it capitalist democracy. Some of us call it participatory democracy. But whatever you call it, it is not democracy. You know, democracy implies that it, there's the people who are controlling their resources for the interests of the people, whether it's directly controlling, because we're, we're working here in, the, in uh, Lohman's mine and we're collectively controlling the resources, or whether it's indirectly because we have clearly revolutionary patriotic uh, representatives who are making decisions for the interests of the people and control the resources for the interests of the people. Nowhere in capitalism do you have that, whether it was in Nazi Germany, whether it's currently in occupied Azania, but you are told a lie that when you had apartheid, they claimed that this was democracy. You were told a lie that in 1776, after the US was created uh, and, ex and extended yeah. as a settler colony, that somehow they were democracy, even though women couldn't vote, nor could any people of color, or even indigenous people who owned the land. Vote, yes. Yes. Them, but they were claiming that this was a democracy. So their claims are laid, but we had to dismiss these claims in terms of really pointing out what the truth is. And I think that's important. In terms of what we have to do, first of all, we see that we're overwhelmed by these lies that so many of our people are, are accepting, i.e. the notion of democracy. This yes. requires political education. We have to politically educate ourselves so that those that most astute can, can be uh, in the forefront of, of being able to actually explain what really is happening and explain the lack of democracy. 
we have to politically educate uh, uh, the masses in terms of this to actually make a change. And this also requires organization. So I think these two things, political education and organization, they go hand in hand. You can't have political education unless you somehow organize to do this. And if you have organization that doesn't emphasize political education, you won't have a conscious, ideologically clear organization, and it, it will just go along with what's being said in terms of the dominant ideas. So political education and organization are key. And, 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 and Comrade Tumul, you are talking about um, political education. And um, one of, one of the, the places under which um, some of these, uh, these um, liberal ideas are being harnessed, especially in, um, in, in, in capitalist democracies like ours and, and other countries, is, um, is universities. And um, the university seems to be the breeding ground of uh, uh, these uh, uh, lies because they continue to produce the type of, uh, sometimes they would say political scientists, historians, economists, and so on and so forth, that come from a perspective of uh, uh, exacerbating or extending uh, the lie. How would you suggest that um, we capture the, the PAC, captures such elements of uh, uh, um, the population, especially those that are in, in universities and the lower levels to capture them so that by the time uh, they get out of that environment, those institutions, they are able to carry the correct lie and they are able to view the lie so that they can begin to fight against it as it has been fought for the past 62 years by the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania and other like-minded organizations. Well, I've, I've argued for years that we really, as PAC, need to put more emphasis and resources in terms of organizing POSMA, you know, on the university campuses. Um, uh, there, there's always this debate over, okay, how much energy uh, you spend on universities because there's a bourgeois setting and uh, we should instead be, you know, amongst uh, the people uh, in terms of those that are really the toiling masses, we should be at Maracana instead of at the University of Pretoria organizing this. Uh, and it's, it's not unique to Occupy the Zania. This is a global phenomenon that much of left movements uh, disdain us working at the universities uh, because of, of the fact that the, the dominant ideas for the bourgeoisie come out of the university and the fact that most of those at the universities are there because they want to climb that ladder and be part of the petty bourgeoisie uh, or even the bourgeoisie. And, uh, but at the same time, we know historically that these universities have been the settings where uh, revolutionaries have grown. I mean, Fort Hare was where uh, Subukwe started and was, a, was the president of the student government and gave, you know, uh, a notable presentation uh, at, at doing, doing there. And we know that the university settings were based like Kwame Ture uh, were, were nurtured. We know that Fidel Castro was a student at the University of Havana. So we, we have numerous examples in terms of, of the universities being the sources of not only uh, revolutionary leaders, but revolutionary organization. So I, I think it's important, particularly in this, uh, this complex time uh, that the PAC put more emphasis on these, these university settings to counter the reactionary positions being raised by uh, reactionary intellectuals and also to support uh, those revolutionary and progressive intellectuals on the university campuses and to grow uh, a truly revolutionary African intelligentsia out of this setting. And I think the time is right. Uh, the numbers of students has just grown exponentially. The universities are not only in occupied Azania, but across Africa have grown exponentially. And at the same time, we know that so many of the students that are, are getting out do not have jobs and do not have real opportunities and see that even while they're at the university. So the time is ripe for us to, to really focus more political education at that university setting to help develop a revolutionary African intelligentsia that then can go, after leaving the campus, can go and be, deal with all the other sectors 
uh, in terms of organizing our masses, because it's only through this mass organization that we'll be able to overthrow capitalism. Yeah, yes. Thank, thank you very much, Comrade Truman, for that presentation. We see that uh, Comrade Jabu is back. Uh, Comrade Jabu, I think there, there has been a problem with your network and the connection there. I'm going to give you uh, about a minute to make a, uh, a closing remark uh, on, on this, but um, I want to, to, to give a preamble to your closing remark by reading Mulula uh, Mimayongo's uh, comment. And, and he says, the whole setup of a present leaders should be abolished. Only Africanism should be left to push the continental unity. And that comes after what Siswe has said in earlier, that Gavi, Nkrumah, Sobukwe, and many others called for a United States of Africa. Continental unity is the minimum goal leading to an Africanist socialist democracy. Give us your parting shot, Comrade Jaulani, and then we will get into the parting shot of Comrade Trimbo, and uh, we, 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 we do the closing remarks. No, no African in his right mind wouldn't agree with that particular statement. The only challenge we have, uh, my leaders, is that when this must be achieved, we need to, to do certain things for this to be achievable. One of the first things we, we need to do is to control media, is to have our own media. The minds of our people are not controlled by ourselves. The people do not understand the Africanist philosophy or the uh, African nationalism. Look at what China is doing. The Communist Party of China is controlling everything from the internet all the way to print media, electronic and print media, they're in charge of that. They're teaching every Chinese to first have loyalty to the China, to the Chinese uh, program of action on nationalism that seeks to, to conquer the world. And So you're saying we must take over. What, what you're saying is we must take over. Take over the land. For, for people, you need the masses to understand why you must take over the land. It should okay. not be an elitist thing again. It should not be few of us talking about that when every day our people are being depoliticized because they oh, are right. exposed oh, right. to the I hear media. You. I hear you. Because they're exposed to the media that does not push the line of thought that would uh, edge us closer to African nationalism and continental unity as espoused by Sobukwe, Biko, and Kruma, and all those Benyereres, the Amilka governors of this world. We, we need to have control of the media. We must find a way to use the media to the benefit of educating of our, our people because they're the, yeah. they going to be the ones driving that revolution, not us, no. a few of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Masango, for that closing remark. Comrade Trimbo, your, your brief closing, closing remark as well. Once again, I'd like to emphasize that there's no democracy under capitalism. And what we need is scientific socialism in a unified Africa. And this requires political education and organization. Organize, organize, organize should be our, our, our key thoughts. And with that, we have to focus in on land. Uh, land is the basis of all of these resources. I mean, the mine sits on the land, the industry sits on the land, the shopping mall sits on the land, the farms, yes. the land has to be the basis. And the justice issue is really prevalent here. We're talking about land being returned to the indigenous people, the true owners of the land. And this notion should not just rest here in occupied Azania. We should hold this position on a global basis. The return of the land to the indigenous peoples in Australia, the return of the land to the indigenous people in Palestine, the return to the land to the indigenous people in, Amer in the Americas. So land is essential. He's a leg to. Africa. Uh, Comrade Trimble, thank you very much for that. Comrade Masangu, thank you very much for making the time and making these interesting contributions on the issue of um, uh, democracy versus democracy and how these have affected our own people. I want to thank you, colleagues. I, I thank you very much for making the time. Um, all the best and uh, have a good evening, uh, uh, Comrade Jaulan Masangu. 
and uh, Comrade John Trimble. Thank you very much, Israel to Comrades. To the viewers at home, uh, we've had a beautiful, beautiful session that has taken place over uh, uh, this one, uh, one hour, 30 minutes. And I hope that we have achieved some element of making it clear to the viewers at home, the Africanists, the comrades and the friends uh, uh, at home to understand that there is a type of democracy that has been, is, is, been, is, is being implemented in occupied Zania. And that there are also other ways of viewing and seeing democracy. We need to understand what democracy is. We need to understand how it operates. We need to understand what it seeks to achieve so that when we participate in it or when we, when we hear about its particular name or this particular word of democracy, we are able to be clear as to what is it that we are involving ourselves and our people into. But what is very dominant in this discussion is that there are elements that um, make uh, this so-called democracy in our country. One of those elements is money. Secondly, uh, uh, Comrade Trimble says, uh, unfortunately, there is no democracy because there is capitalism. And also, um, uh, Comrade Jabe is talking about the issue of the control of the media and the depoliticization of the people. But earlier, I had made an example of um, what Comrade uh, Peku, the, the, the stalwart of the PAC, was referring to that. We need a, a new type of, of democracy. We need a type uh, that is liberatory, a type that is uh, going to be speaking to the people to declare people free. That is not freedom. In 1948, the United Nations declared a crime against humanity. But there was a, 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 a legalized apartheid for many years while the declaration was made that the, uh, um, there should be the enhancement of human rights in the globe, but there was still um, apartheid. To this day, we've got apartheid in, uh, in, in occupied Palestine. To this day, uh, in occupied Tanzania, you've got neo apartheid. Um, to this day, you've got countries that uh, um, um, have got, uh, <coughs> uh, they, they are people, uh, because they are African, they are regarded as non beings. So the declaration is not only. It is not only uh, uh, important to declare something is not to act upon it. There is no liberation in South Africa. There's no freedom in South Africa. From this discussion, this is what we have had. And I'm going to, to, to close this discussion with these words. Democracy for a country that is emerging from colonialism and apartheid is not a matter of a vote, periodic elections, and personal or factional power that does not uplift the majority of the population of this country and make their welfare the main objective of their political agenda. Democracy must be liberatory for the poor economically and socially. The present conditions in the country need political leaders who are committed to a liberatory democracy. We are closing this session with those words from Dr. Uh, uh, Mutsuku Peku, the stalwart of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. We, we're closing it because we started with him and we are closing with him. Colleagues and friends, viewers at home, Africanists across the globe, revolutionaries, who has been making the time to watch this series. Thank you very much for allowing me uh, into your, your, your rooms, your dining rooms, your living rooms, your, 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 your bedrooms, your, your cars, wherever you are. You've allowed the PAC of Azania from 6 up until 7.30 every day for the past week to celebrate with you the 62nd anniversary of the establishment of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. There were a few things that we wanted to achieve, three of them. One, the, the linking up with other revolutionaries in the, in, the, in, the, in the continent and in the world. Two, dissecting uh, these dominant ideas that have been taking place in the peripheries. We try to bring them in the fore and into the public. Three, we are trying to encourage the, the issue of discussion and debate within the PAC. And hopefully, over the past week, we have achieved that. And we are saying as the PAC, you, Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, you have started a great thing, carry it forward. 
live with it because the heritage of the African people in occupied Azania depend on you. The lives of the African people in occupied Azania depend on you. The PAC is the masses and the masses are the PAC. As a message of support to the workers tomorrow, we're making this announcement. The Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania will be at Sedibe at 10 o'clock collecting the one million signatures because the PAC says, let the occupied South Africa fall and the Azania must rise. So all the Africanists, all the people who are, are, are looking for a, 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 a different approach to the, to, to, to the governance of this country, let us gather tomorrow on the workers' day in Citibank, 10 o'clock, we are collecting the 1 million signatures, and at 12, we are going to be having uh, um, the rally. Go to Citibank, follow the PAC online social media, follow everything that is a PAC, because PAC promises to hold a liberatory democracy. Thank you very much. Tandoletu from Gerald Kondo branch in Tswane Pretoria. He is appreciative of all that you have given to me, and I hope for the best for all of you. At this particular moment, I want to say to all of you, wherever you are, is to the Africa, the Africa, is to We are out. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Shaya 